Uh, we just read the first part of the uh, uh, 36th chapter. Uh, so tonight we're going to look at this chapter. It's, uh, it's rather longer than last week's, but uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hope to cover it all. It's clearly divided into two parts. Uh, verses 1 to 15 is a transformed land, and verses 16 to 38 is a transformed people. That's what God is going to do in the, uh, in the restoration of the people of Israel. The introduction to the prophecy, if you go back to chapter 33 and verse 2, you've got Son of Man. 34 verse 2, Son of Man. Uh, 35 verse 2, Son of Man. Uh, and chapter 36, uh, verse 1, also thou son of man. So the chapters are introduced uh, by this title that is given to uh, Ezekiel as son of man. Uh, it's also there in verse 17, which gives you uh, the indication of the uh, second part of the prophecy of the chapter, uh, son of man, uh, verse 17. So, uh, verse 1 of chapter 36 then. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. The phrase, the mountains of Israel, is almost exclusively used by Ezekiel. There's one occurrence uh, outside Ezekiel, uh, where in the book of Joshua in chapter 11 and verse 21, uh, where he's talking about cutting off the Anakims from the uh, mountains of Judah and from the mountains of Israel. But within the prophecy of Ezekiel, there's a contrast in this chapter with the sixth chapter, which also prophesies concerning the mountains of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 2 says, A son of man... Set thy face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. Uh, and verse 3, uh, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Uh, Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. There's a condemnation of the idolatry and the evil practices of the people of Israel in Ezekiel's day and a prophecy of the downfall of the people of Israel and of the land of Israel, the mountains of Israel. Then in chapter 19, uh, there's a simile uh, used of uh, two young lions uh, that were prepared uh, by uh, Israel, as it were, as a, a lioness. Uh, and the second one, who is uh, Jehoiachin, if we look at uh, verse 9 of Ezekiel 19, uh, then uh, they shall put him in ward in chains. He's going to be taken by Babylon uh, and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into holds that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. Apart from that, this phrase, the mountains of Israel, is used in these prophecies of the restoration. Uh, there are 18 altogether, so you've got 14 in these chapters, and there are four in the chapter that we're dealing with, the greatest concentration of that phrase. So we're looking at the mountains of Israel representing the land of Israel. So Ezekiel chapter 36 then. Uh, we've already read the, uh, the uh, verse 1 uh, where you've got a couple of the occurrences. Uh, verse 4 uh, says, Therefore ye mountains of Israel hear the word of the Lord God uh, thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and so on, uh, that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. So they've been punished uh, for their sins. And then in verse 8, we have the fourth occurrence, 
but ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit. So there's a restoration of the land uh, prophesied in this chapter. Uh, verse 3 uh, of the uh, prophecy uh, of the 36th chapter says, Therefore prophesy and say, uh, Thus saith the Lord God, uh, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, uh, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, uh, and so on. So because they've been made desolate, and the residue of the nations, uh, the word translated heathen is goyim, uh, which means either nations or Gentiles, or heathen. It's translated uh, all three ways. Uh, the residue uh, of the nations uh, around, um, they have, uh, they've lorded it over the people of Israel. Verse 4, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and so on, uh, to the cities that are forsaken, which have become a prey and a derision to the residue uh, of the heathen. Again, uh, that phrase, the residue of the heathens there, it's there in verse 5 to, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen of the nations and against all Idumea. Uh, and Idumea uh, is picking up uh, chapter 35. At the end of chapter 35, uh, As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of of the house of Israel, because it was desolate and desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumea, even all of it. They lorded it over uh, the people of Israel. They rejoiced at the downfall of Israel because they thought they would be able to take the spoils. Because of this attitude, uh, verse uh, 6 uh, of uh, this chapter, uh, prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the riv hills, the rivers and to the valleys, uh, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen, uh, the shame of the nation, the shame that the nations are poured upon the people of Israel. They're despised by the nations. That attitude hasn't changed, has it? The nations of the world, they regard Israel as a pariah nation, uh, generally. Uh, they've just very recently been able to change the attitude of the uh, United Nations, uh, to some extent anyway. Uh, but generally the, there's been a great opposition uh, and great criticism of anything that Israel does. Uh, so the attitude of these nations round about, well, there's going, it's going to be reflected in events which are yet to come uh, because God is going to uh, bring his vengeance upon them. Uh, verse 2 says, uh, Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you. The enemy are the uh, nations around uh, and in Chapter 39, uh, when the uh, restoration is pretty well complete, um, uh, verse 27 of chapter 39 says, When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am Yahweh their God. So... They suffered at the hands of the enemy. Uh, they say, uh, continuing in verse 2 of chapter 36, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Uh, and that too, of course, uh, has its modern counterpart. Well, uh, in chapter 25, uh, we have a series of nations... Uh, that are uh, opposed to Israel. Uh, and verse 3 of chapter 35 says, uh, Say ye to the Ammonites, 
Hear the word of the Lord God. Uh, Thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidst, Aha, against my sanctuary when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah uh, when they went into captivity, and so on. Ammonites, uh, verse 8, you've got the Moabites. uh, Verse uh, 10, uh, sorry, verse verse 12, you've got Edom. And in verse uh, 15, you've got the Philistines. they're all, uh, uh, they, they think they've gained by the downfall of the people of Israel. Uh, and there's an attitude uh, of uh, despite. Uh, in verse 6 of chapter 25, it says, uh, Thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands and stamped with the feet and rejoiced in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. And again in verse 15 of that chapter, uh, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to rejoice it, to destroy it for the old hatred. There's a despitefulness involved in the uh, nations. And back in our chapter, chapter uh, 36, it's there uh, in verse 5. Uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the nations, against all I do mere, which have appointed my land unto their possession with the joy of all, all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. So God brought judgment on the people of Israel, but the nations that were involved... And the nations that observed, they carried forward more. Uh, They brought more judgment on Israel than was originally intended. And their attitude was going to be judged uh, by God. And so verse 6 of Ezekiel chapter 36 goes on to say, Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say to the mountains, to the hills, and so on, Uh, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the nations. Uh, And that phrase, the shame of the nations, is there, well, their their shame is at the end of verse 7, and you've also got it in verse uh, 15, uh, Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the nations any (coughs) more. their despising of Israel, the the catcalling, as it were, of the people of Israel uh, because of the punishment that God had brought upon them. It's interesting that, uh, in relation to that shame, if we go back to chapter 34, uh, which is the chapter about the the shepherds and the and the flock and the uh, people of Israel being uh, God's flock. Uh, it says in verse uh, 29 of Ezekiel chapter 34, I'll raise up for them a plant of renown and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the, ne- the heathen, the nations any more. So we've got a prophecy of the restoration <laughs> The nations have lorded it over the people of Israel, but they themselves were going to be judged. And so verse 7 says, uh, Therefore, uh, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about them, they shall bear their shame. The shame that they had brought upon Israel was going to be brought upon them. I have lifted up mine hand if we go back to chapter 20 we see how God has lifted up his hand in the past chapter 20 and uh, verse 5 says uh, say unto uh, the people of Israel um, say unto them thus saith the Lord God in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, 
and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am Yahweh your God. So he lifted up his hand up in the land of Egypt. Verse 6, In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, floweth with milk and honey, which is the glory of all land. God had lifted up his hand and delivered the people of Israel from the land of Egypt and brought them into a land that he'd chosen for them. But they didn't obey him. And so judgments were to come upon them. And that's been the, uh, the subject of the earlier chapters of the prophecy of Ezekiel. But now God is going to lift up, I've lifted up my hand, surely, uh, verse 7 of chapter 36, uh, the heathens are about you, they shall bear their shame. So God is going to intervene. And then verse 8 then, uh, this land that's been desolate because of the sins of the people of Israel, but ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. I shall shoot forth your branches. So it's going to be a fruitful land. Shoot forth your branches. If we go back to chapter 17, there's a prophecy there related to trees and branches. Uh, chapter 17 you go verse 8 of uh, Ezekiel 17 says it was planted in a good soil by great waters that it might bring forth branches and that it might bear fruit and that it might be a goodly vine but of course they failed but then at the end of that chapter uh, talking about eventually about their restoration, verse 23 of Ezekiel 17, in the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall bring forth boughs and bear fruit, and be a goodly cedar, and under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing, in the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. And all the trees of the field, representing the nations, of course, shall know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree, as it was under David and Solomon, and have exalted the low tree, as it had been brought down under Nebuchadnezzar, they'd been restored, have dried up the green tree by the Romans in the time of Christ. And Jesus said, if they do these things in the green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Then the, before the, uh, the judgment had been brought upon Jerusalem, the terrible things that were done to him, the wrong attitude of the people of Israel, was while they were a green tree. Uh, and the last 2,000 years or so, they have been dry. And have made, continuing on in the verse, and made the dry tree to flourish. I, Yahweh, have spoken and have done it. And the, the flourishing of the dry tree, it's the tree equivalent of the dry bones of Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, which is uh, another subject, but you get the idea of the restoration. It will be uh, restoration under Christ and the saints. So, uh, verse 8 of chapter 36 then. Um, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel. The, the fruit uh, is mentioned later on in the chapter, uh, verse 30, I'll multiply the fruit of the tree. Uh, that's uh, uh, continuing that theme. Uh, but my people of Israel, uh, chapter 38 and verse 14, 
we tend not to emphasise uh, this aspect of the uh, 38th chapter, but uh, verse 14 says, uh, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it. And verse 16, And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel uh, as a cloud to cover the land. It's my people uh, as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, uh, and I will bring the uh, against my land, uh, and so on. The prophet Amos talks about my people of Israel. We've been reading Amos recently. Um, chapter 8 of Amos uh, and verse 2 says, He said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Uh, then said Yahweh unto me, uh, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not, get, not again pass by them anymore. And so uh, judgment was going to come upon them. But chapter 9 and verse 14 of Amos then goes on to say, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. And they shall dwell, build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. The prophets are consistent in the restoration of God's people of Israel. Yes, they've, been, they've suffered their punishment. But the nations around have brought taken forward the punishment more than was warranted. And so God is going to bless them, doubly bless them, uh, because of their, uh, their trouble that they have suffered. So back to verse 9 of chapter uh, 36. Uh, we read, For behold, I am for you, and will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. I am for you. If God be for us, who can be against us, Paul says in the letter to the Romans, chapter 8 and verse 31. I am for you. What a formidable position to be in, brethren and sisters. If God be for us, who can be against us? Let us rejoice in the blessings that we have received. And the land ye shall be Tilled and sown, it says in verse 9 of chapter 36. So men will till the ground. There's going to be uh, an agricultural economy uh, for the people of Israel. You shall be tilled and sown. Uh, and verse 10, I will multiply men upon you. So we're getting a relationship now between the land and the people who dwell in it. I will multiply men upon you all the house of Israel, even all of it. Uh, and that's emphasised again in the, seven, the 37th chapter, isn't it? The two parts of Israel that have been split apart, all the house of Israel, are going to receive the blessing from God. I will multiply uh, the, um, upon you man and beast. And that again is there in uh, chapter 37. Uh, and verse 26, moreover, I'll make a covenant with uh, of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I'll place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Perhaps remember that the uh, when the Egyptians, the people of Israel were in Egypt just before their deliverance, they multiplied in Egypt. Uh, it seems that there's going to be a, a, a blessing of the people of Israel uh, in their restoration. They are going to be multiplied. They're going to be the head of the nations and no more the tail. Chapter 36 and verse 11. I'll multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring forth fruit. I'll settle you after your old estates and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. Old estates, the time of David and Solomon, that 
exaltation of the nation of Israel. I will do better unto you than at your beginning. And, and Job, of course, is the example of that, isn't it? That uh, he has, uh, he, he suffered, but at the end of uh, the book of Job, he was blessed more than he had at the beginning. So the nation of Israel uh, will be blessed at their end. Verse 13 says, Thus saith the Lord God, uh, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men and hast bereaved thy nations, um, therefore thou shalt devour men no more. It was when the spies went into the land, wasn't it? Uh, in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 32, it talks about the land uh, uh, eating up the people, devouring the people. Um, well, the land is going to devour it no more. It's going to be a, tire, a place, a land of blessing. And so verse uh, 15, uh, Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the nations, the heathen, any more. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord Yahweh. The land of the nation of Israel, or at least the, the land, is going to be settled. It's going to be at peace. It's going to be fruitful. It's going to be transformed into a great blessing. Well, the rest of the chapter deals with a transformed people. It's almost like the creation. You remember how the, on the, the, the third day... Uh, you've got the the plants and uh, and, and so on uh, came forth in the uh, um, in the earth, uh, and then uh, there were creatures, uh, the uh, ultimating in the animals and so on uh, that dwelt upon it. Well, you've got the land transformed in the first part of the chapter. Now the people is going to be transformed. Uh, verse seventeen. Uh, son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. The cleansing of the people of Israel is used in terms of the law. Ezekiel is introduced to us in the first chapter as a priest. Um, that word defiled is there over 160 times in the Old Testament scriptures. 85 of those times is, are in Leviticus. 25 of those times are in Numbers. Add those two together 110 times out of uh, the uh, 160 odd uh, occurrences. And in Ezekiel, 30 times of what's left. Yes, there's a, refer uh, the, a reference particularly to the uh, defile defilement of the people of Israel. And if we go to uh, the Leviticus chapter 18, we see how this has its effect uh, upon the, the land. Uh, Leviticus chapter 18 and verse uh, 24. Uh, Defile not ye yourselves with any of these things, various things that I have commanded not to do, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. So, the defilement of the people contaminated the land. But when the people went into the land, they did the same as the nations that were before them. And so they suffered their punishment. 
we too are going to be uh, judged for what we have done. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10 talks about standing before the judgment seat and receiving in body what we have done, whether good or bad. We defile ourselves and the land if we do evil. If we do good, then we bless the land. It becomes a blessing. So we see the, uh, the contrast. The way we live, the way we behave, brings blessing or cursing upon the land and upon the name of God. We'll be talking about that uh, a bit more as we continue. But that uncleanness uh, of a removed woman in verse, uh, at the end of verse 17, that too is uh, a law term. 37 times in the Old Testament, 20 in Leviticus, 9 in Ezekiel. So Ezekiel is dealing with this uh, in relation to uh, the... Uh, the uncleanness um, or, or the dealing with the defilement under the law which is going to be cleansed. Um, in verse 25, uh, that same word of this chapter, uh, Ezekiel 36, uh, it's translated, the uncleanness is translated filthiness. Uh, and it's there in verse 29 too. So three times of the... Uh, of the nine in Ezekiel are in this chapter. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, uh, verse 29. I will call for the corn and so on. They were going to be cleansed. They are unclean, but they are going to be cleansed. Idols. Uh, filthy idols, somebody translates them in verse 18. Uh, of Ezekiel 36 therefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they shed upon it and for their idols uh, wherewith they had polluted it the abominable practices associated with the worship of the idols uh, was a, a defiling aspect uh, of their life um, that word idols occurs 39 out of 48 in, in the Old Testament, in, in Ezekiel. So it's, uh, there's a concentration there. Well, verse 19, I scattered, the, I scattered them. The Assyrians and the Babylonians scattered them, but I scattered them. It's God that brought their punishments upon them. It is God that is going to deliver. Uh, and verse 20, when they entered into the, unto the heathen, uh, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, these are the people of Yahweh and are gone forth of, out of his land. By the way they behaved among the nations uh, amongst which they were scattered, they defiled, they profaned my holy name. Because the question is, do we? Because by our actions, we bring honour to the name, or we defile that name. We have been called out of the nations a people for his name. It's up to us to live according to the principles of that name, the character uh, of the name revealed uh, to Moses in Mount Sinai. It's up to us to follow that character and not to defile it uh, by the, uh, the wrong actions that we do. And so, the, the people of Israel had been uh, punishment uh, punished uh, for the profaning uh, his name in the land and amongst the nations but the nation is well verse 20 
goes on, when they entered into the heathen, uh, whither they went, they profaned my holy name, uh, verse 20, uh, verse 21, I had pity for mine holy name, uh, verse 22, therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, for but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen whither ye went. God is going to exalt his name. And it's up to us to see that we exalt that name in our lives so that we can be part of that exaltation uh, when the kingdom is established. That's the exaltation Uh, that we receive and so verse 23 says I will sanctify my great name which was profaned among the nations which ye have profaned uh, in the midst of them and the nations shall know that I am Yahweh saith the Lord Yahweh when I shall be sanctified in you (coughs) before their eyes Israel is going to be sanctified. They're going to be separated from the nations to serve their God and to develop a godly character so that the original purpose uh, spoken of at the foot of Mount Sinai was that they should be a kingdom of priests, a nation of priests bringing the other nations to serve their God. What a a wonderful purpose uh, is there for the people of Israel. Well, uh, they, the nations will know that I am Yahweh when I shall be sanctified in you uh, before their eyes. That transformation is going to bring a realisation uh, upon the, uh, to the nations of the uh, the blessings to be associated with the God that has delivered them. So verse 24, I will take you from among the heathen, from the nations, and gather you out of all countries, and I will and will bring you into your own land. I will take you. He'd scattered them. He's going to gather them. And so that's, there's an invitation. They're going to come, be, be, to be brought. Uh, and then verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from your, all your idols will I cleanse you. The nations are going to be sprinkled, or the nation of Israel will be sprinkled with clean water. They're going to be separated. Again, uh, the separation from the nations. And in Numbers chapter 19, uh, where we read about the the red heifer and the the water uh, of sprinkling uh, that was used in the purification uh, of people that have been contaminated, uh, it's Called, the water is called in Numbers 19 and verse 9 the water of separation they're separated uh, from the nations I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean remember uh, Peter uh, when he was being called to uh, go to Cornelius what God hath cleansed that call not thou common. What a blessing it is going to be for the nation of Israel. Ye shall be clean. There's quite an exhortation involved here, I think. In If we go back to uh, Genesis chapter 35, uh, we read of uh, Jacob being uh, told to go to Bethel. <coughs> and uh, there's a when he's going to uh, meet God, as it were, uh, in Bethel, uh, we read uh, Genesis chapter 35, um, 
uh, verse 1 says, uh, Go up to Bethel, uh, make there an altar unto God that appeared to thee when thou fleddest. But verse 2, Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. The approaching unto God involved, first of all, being clean. As far as we're able to be clean, physically clean. And change your garments. I'm not judging, but I get the impression that our dress in our uh, meetings, particularly at the breaking of bread is not really up to the standard that is indicated here. Be clean and change your garments. So there's an indication that we should brightly hallow uh, God and uh, be properly dressed, however it happens to be, uh, in whatever generation you, uh, you live, uh, for uh, our meeting uh, with God and particularly I think in relation to the breaking of bread um, so let's go back to uh, uh, chapter uh, 20, uh, 36 and verse 25 uh, I'll sprinkle clean water and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness uh, and, I, and all your idols will I cleanse you uh, again that being clean is, is a law term um, they used uh, um, ma majority in the in the law, uh, but uh, largely otherwise in Ezekiel. Um, so there's to be a cleansing, and uh, uh, Jeremiah speaks of that in his prophecy of the restoration of Israel. But verse twenty six. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I'll take away the stony heart out of your place. Harden not your hearts. And, brethren and sisters, that exhortation comes to us too. We should allow our hearts to be changed by the word of God. I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. What a change is going to take place in the nation of Israel. What a blessing is going to be there for them in that change. And so a change of heart indicates there's a, a dedication. Verse 24, an invitation. Verse 25, a separation. Verse 26, a dedication of the people, a transformed people. If anybody wants to follow up, there's this dedication, this, this change of heart. It's already been prophesied in chapter 11 and verses 17 to 20. I just want to make a note of that. I don't know whether it's, uh, it's there in the margin. But, uh, uh, the, but that is in connection with the glory departing from the temple in chapter 11. Now here we've got a change which is related to the time of the restoration and then in chapter 43 of Ezekiel you have the glory returning uh, to uh, the temple so uh, there's that uh, aspect uh, there too uh, verse 27 I will put my spirit within you so the word of God will put my spirit within you the attitude of mind developed by the word of God. My spirit. Uh, chapter 37 and verse 14. I will put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. What a blessing for the people of Israel. And then verse 28. Uh, ye shall dwell in the land which I gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. 
I will be your God, is there in Genesis chapter 17 in relation to the token of the covenant given to Abraham. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, Jesus said. I will be your God is a tremendous blessing. It's the blessing of the new covenant. Ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Is there in, uh, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31 in connection with the new covenant. And it's that new covenant that we remember week by week uh, on a Sunday. And I will be your God is part of that uh, new covenant that has been extended to us in advance of the nation of Israel. And then verse 29. I also will save you from all your uncleannesses. I will call for the corn and increase it. Lay no famine upon you. I will save you. Call his name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. For he shall save the, his people from their sins. God is going to save uh, through his son. And so verse 30, I'll multiply the fruit of the tree um, and the increase of the field. You shall receive no more reproach of famine uh, among the heathen. Uh, the reproach of famine is mentioned in chapter 5 and verses 14 to 16. We haven't time to go and uh, look at that, but... Then verse 31, the, the change of mind of the people of Israel. They're, they're so cocksure at the moment. But when the invasion has taken place and America and Britain and nobody else can save them and they're right, they've been taken into captivity and God intervenes. What a change of heart will be there with the people of Israel. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways, verse 31, and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. And so they will repent. There will be a mourning uh, for the a previous way of life uh, spoken of particularly uh, by the prophet Zechariah and then verse 32 not for your sakes do I this but verse 22 for, but for mine holy name's sake uh, he's already said that in, in verse 22 and so it's God's name that is going to be exalted verse 35 they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. The contrast is in Joel chapter 2 and verse 3, when it talks about them being like, a, uh, like the Garden of Eden before them uh, when the invader comes, uh, and it being uh, the land being desolate behind them. Well, here it's going to be changed. It's going to become like the Garden of Eden. The paradise that was there in the beginning is going to be restored. And verse uh, 36, The heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahweh, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it and will do it. And the nations are going to go up to, fit, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. We're told in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16. The nations that are left. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. Early in the prophecy, uh, in chapter 14, he says, I'll not be inquired of by you. Here, they're going, he's going to, they're going to have access unto him. And uh, verse, at the end of verse 37, I will increase them with men like a flock. And we're back to chapter 34. And he's, he's bringing the, the restoration of prophecies together 
uh, as the holy flock, verse 38, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahweh. The nation of Israel is going to be brought as a sacrifice to God. Uh, Isaiah 66 verse 20 tells us. And they shall know. The nations are going to know. Uh, the prophet Habakkuk speaks of the effect of this series of events because he speaks of the time when the kingdom is established. Uh, as Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. A transformed land, a transformed people, giving honour and glory to Yahweh, the great God who has delivered his people and cleansed them. What a glorious time is coming, brothers and sisters. May it be that we will now glorify God in our lives so that at that day we may be accounted worthy to join with the Lord Jesus Christ in bringing that glory to pass, not just in Israel, but in all the world.